the blue of the western sky comes Sky King. As we say here in the west, reach, partner. Reach for Nabisco. Partner. Reach for Nabisco. The bright red seal on the package end means there's mighty good cookies inside, my friend. Yep, that famous Nabisco seal is on all your favorite cookies. Creamy, chocolatey Oreo cream sandwich. Yummy Fig Newtons. mouth melting Lorna Dune. Chipperoons, those great taste in coconut chocolate drop cookies. And many, many others. So just remember, when it comes to cookies... Reach for Nabisco. Nabisco! And now, Sky King... Are you the messenger from Dr. Rogers and Grover? That's right. We got his call. Here's the selfie he wanted. Fine. The local pharmacy ran out. He said it was an emergency. It sure is. Thanks. Good luck. Gaff. There, it's all right, son. We'll never make it, Gaff. There's too many guards, too many walls. They'll put us in solitary for this. Hey, where will we go? Maybe Arizona. This little place called Grover. He said nobody could get out of Carwell Prison. We made it, didn't we, Gav? Remember the day? May 8th, 1947. Hey, Ace. Oh. Car's coming, Doctor. Send Sky in as soon as he gets here. And maybe you better make some coffee. Okay. Can't do it. More coffee, Sky? No, thank you, Penny. He's going to be as good as new, Mrs. Carney. The fever's broken. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, thank the miracle drug, and thank the man who brought it. You've been so kind to us, Mr. King. I'll never forget. Never. A matter of helping a friend, Mrs. Carney. Elizabeth. Be sure he gets plenty of sleep. I'll look in on him tomorrow. Yes, Doctor. Can we drive you home, Doctor? Hmm? Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Carney. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Mrs. Goodbye. Carney. And thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elizabeth, the doctor. I told you not to have a doctor. Darling, I had to. You were so sick. Have they gone yet? Yes. Try to get some sleep. Sleep? I dreamed I was talking to Gaff. I wonder if I said anything about the prison break. Frank. I went through the whole thing in my dream. Gaff was there. I argued with him. Then we were over the wall. And I talked about it. Oh, darling, darling. Oh, I must have said something. Elizabeth, what did I say? I don't know. I wasn't in the room. We'll have to get out of town. We'll have to leave Grover. Oh, why didn't you stay in Carwell? Why did you ever listen to Gaff? I'd have waited for you. Now we've got to spend the rest of our lives running. I must have been crazy. I could have been free by now. Frank, when you're well enough, why don't you give yourself up? Oh, no, Elizabeth. But what kind of an existence is this? Is it going to go on this way forever? Are we always going to be afraid to, to make friends, to live like normal human beings? Please. But you don't realize how much you've changed. Or, or how much I've changed. I'm sorry, Elizabeth, but... I've been out for five years now. I can't go back now. No. I suppose you can't. Try to understand. I think I understand better than you do, Frank. 
I know you weren't like this before you met Gaff. He's like a poison that sickens everything it touches. He's not human. Elizabeth. It's true. He hasn't any regrets. He, he's made a whole new life for himself, and nobody even suspects him. How could they suspect the eminent Mr. Earl Bland sitting in his plush office in Chadwick? But he's still gaff underneath. And he's still a murderer. If he finds out I've talked. Frank, are you crazy? You're not well enough to get up. Besides, you don't even know whether Dr. Rogers heard anything. That's right, I don't. Maybe I didn't say anything. Maybe we're still safe. Operator, I want to talk to Sky King at the Flying Crown Ranch. Busy? All right, this is Doc Rogers. When you get him, will you call me back? Whatever in connection with my professional practice are not in connection with it, I may see or hear, I will not divulge, holding that all such things should be kept secret. Yes? Oh, Sky. The operator said you were trying to reach me. She said it sounded as though it might be urgent. Anything wrong, Doctor? Wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. I thought you might need the songbird again. By the way, how is Carney coming along? Fine, fine. He's a young fellow and strong. I couldn't keep him in bed after the third day. He's been up for a week now. He's he's well enough to take a trip if he wants to. Is he planning one? I I don't know. I hope not. Well, Sky, I'm going to be out your way this afternoon. Mind if I drop in? The door's always open to you, Doctor. You know that. Thanks. I need your advice about something. No, no, it's nothing important. I thought I'd like to talk to you about it. Yes. Yes. Oh, about four o'clock, I think. Good. I'll see you then. Well, that's about the size of it. I told you it was nothing important. But when a man gets as close to retirement as I am, he uh, begins to think about a hobby. <laughs> So you've decided to write a book? Well, yes. I already have a little time in my hands, and I figure I might as well put it to some use. Well, sounds like a good idea. What kind of book are you going to write, Doctor? Why, I hadn't thought much about it, but I thought I might do something on medicine and, uh, oh, crime, for example. Crime? I didn't know you were interested in crime, Doctor. Didn't you? Oh, sure, sure, always have been. You mean murders and, and stuff like that? Murders, uh, robberies, and uh, prison breaks. Well, you certainly came to the right place. You know, me and Skye have uh, solved a couple of murders in our day. Oh, for heaven's sakes. What about the Peterson case? Now, let me see. Wasn't that the time you sneaked into the quarantine rooming house and got the measles? No, that wasn't the time I sneaked in and got the measles. Pay no attention to them, Doctor. But Clipper's right. I think we ought to be able to help you. If you like, I'll give you a letter to the special agent in charge of the FBI office in Phoenix. I have quite a few books you could use as reference. Well, that's very kind of you. I suppose you're interested in, uh, modern crime? Well, I wouldn't want to bite off any more than I could chew. I thought I'd begin with the year 1947. 47? I don't know why, except, uh, I remember about a prison break in 1947 in, uh, Carwell, I think. You know anything about that one, Sky? Carwell? Yes, it happened in the spring, didn't it? Yes, in May, as I recall it. Two men escaped. Do you remember their names? Let's see. Uh, Morgan. Gaff Morgan was one. The other was a young fellow by the name of Jack Kramer. They were never caught. Both dangerous men, I suppose. Gaff Morgan was. But there seemed to be some confusion about the young fellow Kramer. Gaff had hired him as chauffeur. And Kramer claimed he didn't know Gaff was mixed up in organized crime. You believe that? It's possible. Where could I go to find out more about this case? Well, how about the files of the Chadwick Clarion? That's the biggest newspaper around here. Chadwick Clarion? 
I suppose they'd have pictures, too, wouldn't they? They should. You're going to stay for dinner, aren't you, Doctor? No, Penny, I've got to be on my way. I have a couple of more calls to pay. Thanks for your information, Sky. Doctor? Yes? Gaff Morgan was a killer. He was in Carwell for murder. If you know something about him, if you've overheard anything... I don't know a thing, Sky. Doctors pick up a lot of information here and there. Doctors also respect the Hippocratic Oath. All right, Doctor. I understand. So long, Sky. So long. Well, goodbye, kids. So long, Doctor. Bye, Doc. Doctor. Sky, what did he mean by the Hippocratic Oath? Oh, isn't that some sort of a... Well, an allegiance doctors take, not to tell anything they hear about their patients? That's part of it, Clipper. You mean Dr. Rogers might have overheard something about the Carwell prison break from, from one of his patients? Hey, maybe Gaff Morgan is one of his patients. Well, naturally, he'd change his name, maybe even his face. So would the young fellow, Jack Kramer. Oh, but Dr. Rogers must have hundreds of patients. Which one? Remember the other night when Mr. Carney was so sick? Dr. Rogers acted awfully funny when we left. And didn't Mr. and Mrs. Carney just move to Grover five years ago? Oh, but they're both such nice people. I think you two better get cleaned up for dinner. You mean you don't think Mr. Carney's our man? I mean it's late and I'm getting hungry. But you can't drop the whole thing now. I don't intend to, Penny. There'll be a description of Jack Kramer in those newspaper files. How'd you like to fly over to Chadwick for me tomorrow? Well, to look up the case? Oh, sure, Skye. Well, what about me? You and I, my friend, are going to have a talk with Frank Carney. Hmm. That's the way I feel about it. I never did like every Tom, Dick, and Harry fumbling around in my files. You, you sure the editor said it was all right? Yes, he said it was all right. But you can check with him if you want. No. <clears throat> what, uh, what did you want to look up? The story of a prison break. A year, month. It was in 1947, in May. You're sure you're not thinking about the Carwell prison break? You're familiar with it? I'm familiar with a lot of stories. Uh, all right, sit down. I'll, I'll get the files. Clarion. You told him to tell you if I saw anybody snooping around for the stories on the Carwell break. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, well, he, he's a doctor from, from Grover. Grover? Okay, Briggs, thanks for the information. Keep him there. I don't care how you do it. I'll be over in ten minutes. Trouble, boss? Come on, we got work to do. Tell me, why aren't there any pictures in here of the two men who escaped? Hmm? Yeah, I, I didn't know there weren't any. You, you must have missed them. I didn't miss a thing. Are you accusing me of tampering with the newspaper files? I want to talk with your editor. Now, just a minute. Excuse me, I... What's your hurry, friend? What is this? Take it easy, pal. You're a good man, Briggs. Buy yourself an ice cream cone. So that's it. Your gaff. Get him out of here. Come on, pal. And I don't want to hear a peep out of you. He was from Grover, you said. Uh, that's right, Mr. Bland. Grover. I only know one guy in Grover who could shut off his mouth. And I think it's about time I paid him a visit. Keep your eyes open, Briggs. If anybody else wants to look at those clippings... Now, I know what to do, Mr. Bland. If you need me, I'll be at this number. The Carney's place. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I'd like to see the clippings you have on the Carwell prison break. 
It happened in 1947, in May. Want me to go with you, Sky? No, Clipper. I want to talk to him alone. Come in. Hello, Frank. Hello, King. Feeling better? Yep. Mind if I sit down? Why should I mind? Well, you look like you've been out in the sun a lot. Yeah, I have. I've been taking a lot of walks. Do you object? Not a bit. Good. Elizabeth home? Nope. Frank, there's something I want to talk over with you. Look, King, I'm a little tired. If it's about that money I borrowed from you, you'll just have to give me more time on it. The money? Why don't you leave me alone? I told you I'd pay you back when I could. Now, if you don't object, I've got some interesting reading I'd like to finish. Have it your own way. But I want that money by next week at the latest. You'll get it. Just quit hounding me. I'll expect it Monday. Don't ask any questions. Drive away. Make a lot of noise when you leave. Come back in ten minutes. Well, he's gone. I've never been so proud of you, darling. You did fine, Jack. I'm proud of you myself. Who was it? Just a rancher from around here. You've been making all kinds of friends, haven't you? He doesn't know anything about Carwell, if that's what you're getting at. That's what I'm getting at. Why don't you leave us alone? I left you alone. Your husband spilled everything in you to that fat-headed doctor. Well, I was sick, delirious. How did I know what I was saying? Shut up! I've been doing fine as Earl Bland. But there happens to be a murder rap waiting for Gaff Morgan. If the cops find out I'm in Chadwick... The cops won't find out. The only one who knows is Doc Rogers. And now that you've got him, we both know he'll never have a chance to talk. You bet he won't. See to that. You're lucky I found him. Somebody had to clear up the mess you started. Yeah. Somebody had to. I'll get it. Stay where you are. Oh, Tony. What? A girl? Yeah. Briggs brought her here. She came into the Clarion office right after we left. All right, that does it. No, we can't waste any more time. I'm coming back. Start packing. What are we going to do about our guests? We'll take Doc and the girl with us. We can get rid of them on the way. Right. even trace the call. They're holding Penny and the doctor. I heard. I knew about Doc, but Penny? Where are they, Frank? Oh, well, there's a half dozen places they could be. Gaff's home, his office, the bar he owns, Tony Moore's apartment. And there isn't time to check all of them. Besides, if Gaff doesn't get back pretty soon, they'll know something's wrong. There is one way to find them. But I can't do it alone. Look, Sky. I can't ask you to trust Jack Kramer, but, well, you know Frank Carney pretty well. I'll have to send you back to Carwell, Frank. I know. You could have gotten rid of me without letting me know Gaff was here. Why didn't you? Well, he told me he was going to kill Doc. He would have killed you. All of a sudden, the price was too high. Can you believe that? Yes. For five years, I've been afraid. Afraid to make friends. Afraid to walk like a man with my head in the air. 
And today, when Gaff came, so afraid himself, he was willing to murder because of it. I realized for the first time that I'd never been out of Carwell. Funny. I'm going back, and for the first time in five years, I feel free. Frank. I don't feel noble, honey. Just free. What do you want me to do? I want you to escape. What? Look, I can't take Gaff in now. And I can't force him to take me to Penny and the doctor. He'd just lead us on a wild goose chase. But if you went with him, but it's our only chance. You've got to make him think that you're on his side, that you want to leave Arizona with him. Oh, he'll never believe that. He'll believe it because you're going to prove it to him. You're going to kill me. Kill yeah. you? Wait, I think I understand. Gaff will take us to Penny and Doc, and then you'll follow. No. The land's too flat between here and Chadwick for that. He'd see me. And what is your plan, Skye? Gaff gave me the idea himself. There'll be a repairman out here before long to see what happened with this phone. The trouble's already been registered on their test board. Now, suppose something were to happen to the phone at Gaff's hideout. Be a signal telling you exactly where Penny and Doc are being held. Right. First of all, I want you to give me the phone numbers and the general addresses of every place in Chadwick where Gaff's men might be holding Penny and the doctor. Then I'll have the telephone company keep a constant check on every one of those lines. It'll be my job to see that something happens to that phone. You think you can do it, Frank? I can do it. Clipper will be back here almost any minute. I'll need a gun. Do you have one? There's one in the other room. I'll get it. Now, when Clipper gets back here... Gap! Wake up! No. What happened? Where is he? You found out who we were, Gaff. I had to kill him. You will take us with you now, won't you, Gaff? Yeah, sure. We'll have to get out of here. He wasn't alone. How do you know? Well, he didn't leave when he said he was going to. Somebody must have driven that convertible away. Yeah. Okay, come on. I got my car parked down the road. It'll work all the way. Aren't you taking a pretty big chance? He wants to keep Mr. Carney from just skipping out. Nothing except the kind of man he is. Let's go. Hmm. So you finally got here. I was beginning to worry about you. Mrs. Carney. Another of your friends? Oh, we used to see her around Grover. But Mrs. Carney, you... It's no use, Penny. Save your breath. They're not here to help us. I never thought I could have been so wrong on a man. You never can tell, can you, Doc? Kramer's going with us? Part of the way. A couple of things I have to wind up at the bank. We'll leave when I get back. Oh, Mr. Bland, I hate to bother you for a little thing like this, but I haven't been paid. Now, I thought... Oh, yeah, yeah. Tony. Mr. Bland. Sit down. But I haven't been paid. You'll be paid. <laughs> sit down. Put that phone back. I see. All right, thanks. No trouble yet on the test board, Mr. King. Are they checking all the numbers I gave you? Yes, they are. You suppose something went wrong, Sky? Maybe we trusted Mr. Carney... Have them keep on those lines. All right. What are you, though? What goes on here? Did you see him? He was trying to use the phone. What? Now you won't be able to call for help. Call for help? I didn't give... Why, I saw the whole thing. Mr. Carney... You saw what? Nothing. Nothing. I don't get this. I suppose you would have liked it better if Frank had let him make that call. No, but... Yes? Are you sure it's out? They picked up a case of trouble on one of those lines. All right. One, four, eight, Sycamore Street. Thanks. Come right. on, Clipper. Mr. Bland? Yeah. Where you been? What's the matter with you? Oh, I don't know nothing. I don't feel right. Relax. We're on our way. Give me that gun, Tony. All right, all of you. Let's go. Go where, Gap? Scott! I... No, you don't! 
I was never so glad to see anybody in my life. Great work, Frank. And thanks for the gun. All right, don't move. You all right, Penny? Doctor? Sure, Sky. I knew you'd come. Well, I'm not certain that I understand everything yet. But I think I owe a couple of people an apology. Well, Sky, I'm ready. All right, Frank? Thanks, Sky, for offering to fly him back yourself. It makes it easier this way. I have a good reason for wanting to go with him, Mrs. Carney. I happen to know Warden Collins. I think he might be interested in what I have to tell him about Frank Carney. And Doc's going, too. Well, honey? I'll be waiting, Frank. And when you get out, we'll stay in Grover forever. All right, Scott. All right. Sky, Clipper, and Penny may now be seen regularly on TV in a new series of adventure films. Be sure to watch for them.